Hello, and welcome to the second installment of the epoxy training class. Today we will cover chapters 2 and 3, surface inspection and preparation. In these sections, we'll be looking at preparing for inspection, assessing substrates, repairs and preparation for wood, metal, and concrete, protecting surfaces, stain removal, and cleanup. And then you'll be taking another self-quiz to check your understanding. Okay, let's get started. Surface inspection and preparation are the most important steps of any epoxy flooring application. All surfaces will interact with epoxy differently, and the nature of needed repairs will be unique to each surface and job. Multiple factors will determine the type of surface preparation and repair needed for any given project, so it is important to be able to identify the needs of a variety of substrates and know how to correct unfavorable conditions. Identifying potential problems early will keep the application process free of repair issues, which will be harder to fix once the coating has been applied. Most of all, the inspection process is meant to make planning for repairs and the application process easier. For example, will this project require additives such as fleck or glass beads? Will there be problem areas to watch such as cracking or pitting that will need to be repaired? Answering these questions will help installers with estimating the length and cost of a project as well as the tools necessary to finish the job properly. To begin the inspection process, clear the installation area completely. This allows all surface areas that may require repairs or preparation to be seen. Be sure to have a pencil and paper available to make notes when needed. Look for and record damaged areas of substrate that will need to be repaired. Issues that are common to most substrates include cracks, stains, pitted areas, missing or destroyed areas that need patching, previous coatings needing to be removed, surface levelness, moisture content of the surface. The three most common substrates used for epoxy application are concrete, wood, and metal. Each of these surface types will react, bond, soak, and cure differently than the others. The age and condition of the surface will also create differences in the preparation process. It is important to know these differences in order to assess substrate conditions for all preparation and repair work. Determine the amount of product you will need by calculating the length, width, and depth of cracking areas, which will give you the square footage of the crack or broken area. Standard crack filler contents range from 5.5 ounces to 8.6 ounce tubes and cover from 2 square feet to 5 square feet. Checking for moisture. Moisture becomes present within concrete surfaces for a number of reasons including condensation, moisture migration through the slab from wet soil, broken or leaking pipes buried below or in the concrete, surface water from leaks or flooding collecting on the concrete. Epoxy bonding failures caused by moisture are the industry's largest installation problem. Muscle Gloss recommends testing for moisture transmission as part of the inspection process. The recognized methods are ASTM-F-1869, standard test method for measuring moisture vapor emission rate of concrete subfloor using anhydrous calcium chloride. ASTM F-2170, standard test method for determining relative humidity in concrete floor slabs. ASTM D-4263, plastic sheet test. This test is only an indication of the presence of moisture and should not be used to determine moisture movement. No matter which test you use, if moisture is indicated, you will need to address the issue before installation. The following are some general rules when dealing with moisture. The speed of the drying process is dependent on several conditions. Thickness of the concrete. Thicker slabs dry more slowly. Concrete density. Dense concrete will dry more slowly. Moisture content. More water content requires more time to dry. Temperatures of the concrete and the air above it. Dew point temperatures of the air above the concrete. Low dew points will cause migration of the water from the concrete. It is important to have appropriate air circulation during all drying procedures. As moisture rises to the surface, air movement at the surface will carry it away and promote evaporation. Evaporation rates will triple with a 5 mile per hour wind and increase another 60% at 10 miles per hour. Heat is another way to remove surface moisture. 
evaporation is accelerated as air temperature within as well as on the surface of the concrete increases. Heat moves water and solid materials, allowing it to move to the surface and evaporate easily. Most often, air heating is used to heat space above the substrate and through convection, heat the concrete. Proper air circulation will help achieve proper convection. Do not apply direct heat to the substrate. Instead, heat the space above the substrate. Direct heat can be harmful to the drying process. Dehumidification will significantly dry substrates if the dew point temperature above the surface is low enough for the water to migrate from the concrete into drier air. In many cases, displacing the moisture filled air with drier outside air will be effective in lowering dew point temperatures. Colder climates offer an opportunity to utilize this option. In freezing temperatures, dew point temperatures are also very low. New concrete must be well cured and dry prior to coating. Allow new concrete to cure a minimum of 30 days. No curing agents or sealing compounds should be used at any time prior to the concrete curing, after which any oil, grease, or other foreign material must be removed. If you seal or epoxy concrete prior to 30 days, there is a chance you will be sealing in some of that moisture and hence weakening the integrity of the concrete. Another more common problem that occurs when you seal in the moisture is you can see white cloudy blotches, which is the reaction of the moisture with the epoxy. This prevents a strong bond from forming and the epoxy can peel up. Repairs and Preparation for Wood Epoxy is the perfect material to make permanent repairs of rotting wood such as window sills, door jams, and exterior molding that are difficult to remove and expensive to replace. Applying an epoxy coating can ensure a tighter seal and a longer lasting finish on any wood surface. Materials Epoxy coatings must be applied directly to the wood substrate. Wood surfaces must be ultimately free of all waxes, varnishes, waterproofing, or other foreign materials and properly etched to ensure a good bond with the epoxy. Most wood epoxy repairs will require a trowel or putty knife, wood filler, and sandpaper. Cracks and damaged sections. Repair cracked and damaged sections by applying a wood filling agent to cracked or chipped areas. Smooth filler compound with a putty knife or trowel, then sand to achieve a properly etched surface. Wood filling agents should be dry, smoothed, and sanded before applying an epoxy coating. Note, though epoxy bonds to wood easily, sanding is needed to create an etched surface for proper bonding. Concerns Epoxy coatings are easily applied to untreated plywood. However, Wood will soak up excess epoxy and may need multiple coats depending on the wood's moisture content and age. Old dry plywood will require the most coatings. For best results, moderately aged wood with average moisture content is preferred. Metal. Epoxy can be used to coat metal. This is most commonly used in cases of rust repair or sealing and strengthening the metal. This type of epoxy application is useful for piping and other industry repairs. Metal repair may require soldering and patching to ensure proper application. Materials Metals must be cleaned with a water-based degreaser before epoxy application. A dry, degreased surface is optimal to begin etching and preparing for an application. Etch using a wire brush. After the desired roughness is achieved, apply an etching primer such as muscle prep using a paintbrush. Cracks and damaged sections. In order to repair metal cracking, soldering and patching may require special tools. Consult a metalworking specialist for details about fixing metal cracks. Concerns. Epoxy coatings should only be applied to metal substrates if the surface can be deemed fundamentally sound. If metal is weak, epoxy coatings may not be enough to re-strengthen the surface. Concrete. Concrete is the most common surface when it comes to epoxy coatings. Most of these applications are residential as well as manufacturing and facility flooring. Epoxy jobs to these industry types are extremely useful in protecting from chemical staining, physical wearing, and heavy foot traffic. Concrete also demands a significant amount of inspection and preparation, especially when cracking, deep expansion joints, and stains are present. Cleanliness of surface. A clean surface is necessary to establish a strong bond between the epoxy coating and the concrete substrate. 
Stains and blemishes should be marked and recorded as this will make preparation more organized and easier to complete. A substrate free from dirt and residue will ensure a higher quality floor finish. The upcoming concrete surface preparation will include washing dust and debris with a power washer so small particles may be ignored during the survey process. Concrete Cracking Cracked concrete must be surveyed and recorded before the preparation and application process. This will be helpful when ordering needed materials, creating a level surface and creating a professional looking flooring system for the customer. Cracking is one of the most common imperfections found during the surface inspection process, especially with older concrete areas. The repairing of these areas will be crucial to the finished look of any surface, as epoxy will not fully cover these untreated imperfections. Repairing cracks will involve the use of a putty knife and crack filler for cracks up to a half inch wide. Remove loose concrete pieces within cracks and clean the surface with a wire brush. Apply the crack filler with a caulk gun to cracked surface areas. Level crack filler with a putty knife. Clean tools immediately with water. You should let concrete dry before sanding or etching to ensure proper bonding and repairs will remain in place. Expansion Joints For a completely smooth surface, expansion joints should be filled before sanding concrete surfaces. Filling expansion joints with flexible joint sealer will allow movement during freezing and warming conditions. Remove loose concrete pieces within joints and clean the surface with a wire brush. Pour the flexible joint sealer into expansion joints and let the joint sealer fill above the concrete surface. Smooth flexible joint sealer with a putty knife or trowel in order to level the surface area. Let sealer dry 24 hours before sanding or etching concrete. Note, it is quite common that sanding of excess joint sealer will be needed for a smooth epoxy finish. Patching repairs. Patching may be necessary for damaged areas of concrete. Fixing these areas will make for an easier application and a professional finished product. Mix only the amount of patching material to be used within roughly 30 minutes and do not apply patching to painted or coated surfaces. Remove loose concrete pieces. Chisel away cracked materials and square off or undercut edges with a chisel and hammer. Use a wire brush to remove crumbling pieces and rough and smooth surfaces. Areas of repair should be free of debris and dust. Apply patching mix with a trowel using heavy pressure. Overfill joints slightly, then trowel smooth. For deep cracks, apply in quarter inch layers. Allow to dry for two hours between layers. Clean tools immediately with water. Levelness of surface. Levelness of surface applies to uneven, damaged, or broken substrate. We do not mean to imply the entire surface area needs to be level. In fact, many surfaces are designed this way for proper drainage. Epoxy coating should only be applied to even concrete substrates. Mark and record any uneven surface areas for an easier preparation process. Grind high spots with a floor sander and fill low spots with crack filler or patch. Pits. Use a traditional liquid bubble level or a laser level to find uneven areas in the floor. Use a wire brush to remove crumbling pieces and rough and smooth surfaces. Pour patching material into pitted areas. Use a trowel or putty knife to smooth level. Clean tools immediately with water. Let patch dry 24 hours before sanding or etching concrete. High spots. Use a traditional liquid bubble level or a laser level to find the floor's high spots. Use a sander or grinder to smooth high spots of concrete. Clean dust and debris from the surface with a power washer before continuing concrete prep and application. Proper etching is crucial for a strong bond between a concrete and epoxy coating. A roughed surface creates a mechanical adhesion that will guarantee a long-lasting application and prevent cracking, chipping, and bubbling. The two most common forms of etching are grinding or sanding, or using a chemical etching solution such as muscle prep. Either method will require sweeping, scraping, and cleaning of the substrate. Grinding. 
Grinding is the most common form of surface etching when preparing for an epoxy coating application. This deep etch will create an optimal surface by opening the concrete's pores for epoxy adhesion. Mechanical etching can be administered by any of the following tools. Floor Grinder Floor grinders use horizontally rotating discs to level, smooth, or clean the top surface of a concrete slab. Most grinders are equipped with a multi-accessory disc that can be loaded with stone, diamond, or other grinding materials. Scarifer Scarifying machines apply a cutting wheel to the concrete surface. The scarifer cutting drum flails the surface, leaving a clean, textured, or roughened finish. Shot Blaster Shot blasting is the fastest, cleanest, and most economical method of mechanical surface preparation available. This process cleans and profiles concrete substrates to achieve an optimum surface for bonding. Shot blasting is not recommended for the removal of existing coatings. The etching pattern created may be visible even after applying new coating systems. Use with untreated surfaces only. Begin grinding concrete using a floor grinder, scarifer, or shot blaster. In order to eliminate concrete dust, use a grinder with a built-in vacuum. Be sure to wear protective eyewear and a respirator during grinding. Use a hand grinder or sander to etch hard-to-reach places and edges of substrate. Sweep and vacuum concrete dust from areas using a shop vac. Use a hose or power washer to clean the surface of all dust and debris. Grinder Safety Grinders comprise of fast-moving parts and heavy machine components. To properly maintain safe user practices, please review each machine's user manual and safety features. In general, grinders, scarifers, and shot blasters should be held in front of the user and should not be pulled backwards towards the user at any time. This process will require a floor grinder, scarifer, or shot blaster, broom, or shop vac, hand grinder or sander, eye protection, and a respirator. Be sure to wear protective eyewear and respirator during grinding. Etching Solutions Etching and prep solutions can be used to rough concrete when grinding is not an option, such as an unventilated area or small spaces. This solution may have to be used more than once in order to gain the desired surface roughness. This process will require an etching solution such as muscle prep and a stiff bristled shop broom or wire brush depending on the size of the application area. Follow etching solution directions for mixing solution. Apply etching solution to surface using the product container or a watering pot. Scrub solution into the concrete surface with a shop broom or wire brush. Use a high pressure hose to wash off excess solution. Use the shop brush to push excess water off of the concrete. Let surfaces completely dry before applying additional coatings. Note, muscle prep is non-corrosive and will not harm plants or asphalt driveways. Protecting surfaces, stain removal, and cleanup. Protecting surfaces unrelated to an epoxy project and cleaning surfaces properly are important to maintaining a clear and precise finish. This will require planning for materials such as painter's tape, plastic sheeting, cleaning solutions, power washers, or high pressure hoses. Protecting surfaces. Protecting surfaces from unwanted coatings can be as easy as applying plastic sheeting with the help of painter's tape for a strong hold. Cutting plastic sheeting is easiest when using a utility knife or box cutter. This method can be used to keep epoxy off of certain surface areas, walls, ceilings, steps, or any other substrates that will not be included in the epoxy application. Be sure substrates are clear of dust and debris before taping to ensure protection against any bleeding through of coatings after painting. Be sure to refer to product labels when working near plants or water. Additional precautions may be required when working in these environments. Oil, stain, and previous coating removal. Removing stains and previously applied coatings is necessary for creating a properly bonded epoxy floor. These procedures may require a stripping solution, a surface cleaner or degreaser, a paint scraper or a large putty knife, and a hose for washing when the removal is complete. Oil and Stain Removal Removing oil and other stains will require the use of a surface cleaner or degreaser. Many of these solutions require minimal scrubbing and work quickly. 
Apply the solution according to the product instructions, which typically involves diluting with water. After a proper mix is achieved, let product stand and then rinse the area free of excess solution using a power washer or high pressure hose. The removal of previous coatings will require a stripping solution such as muscle strip to lift the coating. Check product labels and instructions for information about handling, mixing, and safety precautions of these solutions. Respirators are advised during any stripping process. After the directed mix is achieved, the solution may become a thick paste. Spread the paste over previously coated areas or paint stains and let sit according to product directions. After proper set time, scrape off paste and loosen previous coatings with a paint scraper or large putty knife. Scrub area with a hand brush and water to remove smaller particles still stuck to the surface. After particles have been loosened, rinse surface with water from a high pressure hose or power washer. Remember, the goal here is to remove any materials that may impede the epoxy bonding to the substrate. Surface Cleanup Cleaning a repaired and prepped surface is an easy but vital step for ensuring a proper bond. After all repairs have dried and proper etching has been achieved, use a power washer or a high pressure hose to wash out all excess etching solutions and concrete dust. Standing water can be pushed out of the area with a shop broom or thick bristled brush. Be sure that all solutions have been rinsed from the area, then allow time to dry completely. Now it's time for the chapters 2 and 3 self quiz. Get out your pencil and paper and let's get started. Question 1. Why is a surface inspection so important to any epoxy application? Number 2. Name two common repairs most epoxy applications require. Question 3. How do you determine how much material will be needed for repairing cracks? Question 4. What are the three most common substrates that epoxy is applied to? Number 5. How long should you wait before applying epoxy to new concrete? 6. Why is it important to treat any oil stains before applying epoxy? Question 7. Why is a properly etched floor important? Number 8. What are the two most common methods for etching a floor? 9. How will you know when you are done prepping a floor? And finally, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Please remember to review any sections you might have had trouble with, and congratulations on completing Chapters 2 and 3.